Welcome back to West Texas View. Welcome back to the West Texas View. I'm Johnny Lou Avery and my guest is Loretta Fulton. She's an author and journalist, uh, has uh, retired from active full-time duty at the newspaper, but still writes for the newspaper, and also has just had a new book, uh, a hot off of the press we're going to talk about later. But one of the things that I've appreciated about Loretta is she was happy to acknowledge all of the people that helped her along the way and now she is so generous to reach back to help other people who are aspiring writers whether they're young people or they're uh, older uh, that just want to write about their family or about something within their uh, their uh, uh, family tree. So Loretta, talk a little bit more about some of these people that helped you along the way. I know you said a lot of your school uh, teachers encouraged you and then of course you had a lot of encouragement when you went to the University of Texas and worked on the Daily Texan. But um, talk about editors and, and other writers that helped you. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, my earliest encouragement came at home. Uh -huh. from my, my mother and father. Very important. Uh, uh, my mother particularly, uh, she was a school teacher and she recognized that I had some abilities, abilities uh -huh. in writing and, and always encouraged that. In fact, uh, she was the first one who thought I might be a newspaper reporter. She liked to tell the story that uh, one year I was on a summer vacation with a cousin and her family and I sent back little postcards from the trip and uh, my mother commented that I could get more information on that little postcard than anybody <laughs> should ever see. And so Very she thought succinctly. I was, uh, she thought I was cut out for a newspaper career, and it turned out she was right. So that was my first encouragement. I also had uh, teachers along the way who, who recognized that that's where my strength was in, in school, and uh, they were encouraging. And, uh, and so the, the bottom line to that is when you hear someone say, brag on you about something, don't just think it's, it's uh, uh, flattery, but say there has to be a seed of truth in this. So if you had just poo-pooed it and, and gone on, it wouldn't have, uh, it, you wouldn't have taken that to heart yeah. and said, this is what I need to do with my life. Yeah, I, I did take it to heart. Uh, it was fortunate because that's what I love to do uh -huh. to start with and then to be encouraged uh -huh. made it even but better. did you ever come up against an editor that discouraged you that made you think oh, this is not the career I want or this is too hard or something like that not really uh, I, I've had excellent editors over the years and uh, there were editors who were challenging and it was difficult at times uh -huh. but never discouraging not uh -huh. no one ever said you never you quit believing in yourself right no it was <laughs> never like that but uh, uh, uh I, I have been uh, very fortunate to have had uh -huh. some excellent editors well and i know another one of your uh, awards was in religious reporting right and uh, -huh. uh and i i was really uh amused to read in something that i read about you that said that you had gotten a very prestigious Baptist award, even though you're not Baptist. That's right, I did. About <laughs> your reporting, uh, and this was given to you by the Baptist General the, Convention the Baptist of Texas. The Baptist General Convention of Texas gives a, a Religion Communicator of the Year award, and uh, I won that back in, I believe it was 2002, when I was doing religion writing. I was nominated for it by a uh, uh, the man who was the uh, public relations director for Hardin Simmons University at the time, which is a Baptist university in Abilene, and I, of course, did both religion and higher education, uh -huh. and I'd done a, a number of articles, and he nominated me for that, uh -huh. and I, I won it, and it was, uh, I was very pleased uh -huh. to, to have received that. It was a nice and award. And most of these things are in-house, <laughs> and we never know about these awards, but it's really important within your credentials that you have had these. And, and I know then that as you retired from your uh, work, uh, your full-time work at the newspaper, then you branched off and went into freelance writing. And, and what do you like the best? Do you like the the structure and the deadlines of a newspaper kind of uh, job, or do you like the the freeness of freelance? It's hard to say which I like best. I loved my career 
my newspaper career. I would do it over in a minute. I, I loved every bit of it. Uh, but now I, I, I like doing the freelance as well. I still have deadlines. I still have that structure. Uh -huh. I just, uh, uh, I do my freelance writing at home. I also uh, go to the newspaper three afternoons a week and do editing uh -huh. there. But the freelance writing I do from home, which is, is wonderful, I enjoy uh -huh. that. But you still have to have a structure. Uh -huh. And uh, I still have deadlines to meet, uh -huh. which I love. I, I thrive on deadlines. I can't, yeah, me too. I can't <laughs> function without deadlines. If I don't have one, I just create one for myself. So. Well, and we're going to talk about the process <laughs> of writing later. But, but you know, the thing that, uh, that came to my mind as we were talking, how much different your how ch how much change happened in your job with the advent of computers absolutely and uh, how much easier <coughs> it made your life yes i'm one that uh i latched on to the new technology as it came along in the paper a lot of people Resisted, don't like technology mm -hmm. they wish we still had the old manual typewriters i was never one of those i'm me either i uh, <coughs> have embraced every advance in technology. You and, have uh, the iPad and, and I have, the whole I have all of that, <laughs> yes, and I think it's all great. I, I, I don't know uh, how we got along without these things back well, in those days. Well, you know, I can just I can just envision you doing your shorthand notes as you're you know, interviewing I still do somebody. That, I still do that. Now, a lot of the younger uh, reporters take notes <laughs> on the, well, on their uh, computer as uh -huh. they're doing a phone interview. They type their notes. Uh -huh. I never did that, and I, that's... Uh, um, something I, I don't think I'll try to get into now. I still do the but even, handwritten notes. But even the editing and, and so on is so much easier with the computers. Oh, yes, and, it is. And being able to work from home is so much easier than... That part's uh, nice. I enjoy uh, working at home. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, you do have to have a structure. Well, tell, let's talk. Let's <laughs> talk about advice for aspiring writers. We've just got a minute, so we're going to have to okay. bring this over to the next uh, session. But go ahead and start talking about uh, something you'd mentioned earlier about people jotting down notes and maybe uh, bits of information about their families and little stories and that that sort of thing. Uh, I advise doing more of that. Uh, keeping a every, journal, handy keeping a journal, all the time. a diary. Just uh, tidbits of information. Uh, you never know when the time might come when you decide you can write a novel or uh, some genealogy, a family story, family history. All those things will be important when that happens. Uh, advice that I can give aspiring journalists and authors is to read as much as you can to observe <laughs> observe absolutely uh, read all kinds of writing all kinds of writers and different uh, types of, of writing uh -huh. uh, we're going to have to take a break right there and and uh, we're going to come back in just a minute and so listen up because we're going to be talking about advice for aspiring writers stay tuned west texas view will be right back <laughs> 